Got it. <laughs> All right. Episode 10 of the Avits and Beyond. My name is Todd Emanuele with you again here. And uh, I have a very special guest this episode, uh, Grammy nominated, Juno award winning, multifaceted musician, fiddle player extraordinaire. Does it, is that on your business card? <laughs> Does anybody have business cards these days? I have a business card, but oh, uh, yeah. I don't know. Uh, Tanya Elizabeth is here. Tanya, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. This is so cool. Uh, obviously, you are the first member of the uh, actual Ava Brothers band to join my show, so I appreciate that. And uh, you could pass on kind words to the other guys if they want to come on. They're more than welcome. So, absolutely, I take them all at once, one at a time. However, uh, if you if you ever wanted to set that up, I I'd be more than happy to oblige. Um, I, I also. Done. Okay, thank you, and I have to thank Michael Gans for helping to set this up. Uh, yeah, I know you guys are friends, and uh, he he made me he made me say this. Um, he said that you guys are friends, but he had to stalk you for a while before you finally relented to his charming personality. Those are his words. Is it that was true? When asked, well, it was when they asked me to play at the wedding. That was oh. when I got to know them a little bit, and then yeah. after that, I felt like we were buddies. I don't know. Maybe he has a different story. I don't. I, that's all he gave me. I I didn't want to spend too much time on on him today because we got you <laughs> here, and uh, he's already been on my show, so we don't we don't need to to focus on him here. But uh, thank you again for coming on. This is uh, very cool, and uh, I really appreciate it. Um, so you are in the band the Ava brothers um what what's your favorite part about being in that group of people do they are they as nice as they seem because i mean you're with them all the time i mean is anybody as nice as they seem oh I no mean, are they not nice <laughs> <laughs> i mean they're humans right everybody's a human being but yeah no they're a great they're great to work with i mean i've been with them for nine years now and wow yeah i mean it's it's a home for me for sure i mean that's family yeah, that's that's really cool. Now, uh, obviously, you and Joe are the uh, the string section, I guess. Uh, I I have some fan questions I'm going to get to, but I kind of want to kind of want to ask you this one right off the bat. Um, Kimberly Neal wanted me to ask you. She says, "When I watch Tanya and Joe on stage, I can't help but imagine that they they must be besties in real life." She said, "They're so fun to watch." Is it true? Are you guys besties? She said, "Did uh, she and Joe just hit it off right from the start?" Yeah, we definitely hit it up right from the start. And we we toured uh, Japan and Korea together wow. um, in the past. And that was with our friend Ramin Karamloo, who was amazing Broadway star. And uh, yeah, he's a wonderful human being. And I wish that we lived closer because he's in California now. So we can't really be as much of besties as, you know, <laughs> it could be if we were in the same city. But where, yeah. where, where are you living? I'm in oh, Nashville. Okay. In Nashville, okay, that's cool. So yeah, you're nowhere near. No, Joe. I would love <laughs> right to be in California. That would be awesome. And uh, yeah, no, his his whole scene is just great. He knows he knows how to pick friends. He really has some great great friends. And like anytime you go to a party that he is in in charge of or anything like that, you know it's going to be a good time. Yeah, well, that's that's neat. All right, so you and Joe are besties. There you go uh, for, <laughs> for Kimberly. You got a good answer there. Um, and, uh, th uh yeah, I, I love Joe. I love you guys. My daughter is a huge Joe fan. She, uh, she's 11. She started playing cello last year and I told her about Joe and we were at the, the Cooperstown show last year, mm -hmm. uh, right in the front row. We were right in front of you actually in the front row, uh, up on the, on the rail. And she was just in awe and Joe gave her the set list after the show and Seth gave her his yeah. pick. And it was just such a cool moment. But uh, to see you guys up close was really something else. When, when When's the next show? When are you guys getting back together? Um, Soonish. Uh-oh. Uh, I have to look at my calendar. You got your date calendar right there? No. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I'm just so focused on like one day at a time, maybe one week if I'm lucky right now. I just yeah. just bought a house and uh, getting settled in and it's just one thing after another. I'm like, oh, this repair and this thing. <laughs> so I'm just, yeah. Uh, let's see. The 23rd of February is the next day that I will be gone with these guys. So you got, you got some time still to, to sit back and relax if that, if you get a chance to actually do that. Um, so tell me this, you were, you were born in Australia. How long were you there for? Just a few months. Oh, so you don't remember any of that no. <laughs> when you were, you don't remember when you were a few months old. Um, 
Do you ever go back? Do you have family there? Yeah, I don't have any family there, uh, okay. but I have been back a number of times. Uh, I had a very long vacation one time and also have toured there a lot. So. That's cool. Well, I figured that's true. You probably have toured everywhere. Um, you started playing the fiddle or the vi- what, what's the difference between a fiddle and a violin? First of all, that's a really dumb question. It's- not i mean people don't know i mean it's basically the same thing a lot of times i can tell how uptight a person is by which word they use if somebody's like that's a violin i'm like (laughs) all right (laughs) so is it just seriously okay i get you and if somebody's like oh because like uh yehudi menuhin for example okay one of the most amazing classical violinists of all time referred to his violin as a fiddle is it just the style of music you're playing or that or it really doesn't matter. I think it's just your sensibility, your intent. Okay. <laughs> so you start you started playing when you were three years old. Is that real? Yeah. <laughs> I read that. Three that's years. That's like thing. child prodigy stuff. I mean, well, you can do that to any child. You just have to be consistent. I and mean, you it, you must have wanted to do it too at the same time. No, no, really? Not no. I I thought everybody did it. I didn't realize that it was an optional thing until I was about six seven. And by then it was too late. I'd already been doing it for so long. My mom was like, you've been doing this for two years. Are you going to quit now? <laughs> <laughs> well, so and when, when did you start touring? You were young when you started touring, right? I started performing when I was nine um, and I started touring full time when I was 16. Wow. Uh, I did some touring before then, 14, 15. Um, but that was more like festivals and like little things here and there it wasn't like hitting the road and being on the road like once I was 16 that's when things really picked up yeah quit school and started my own record label and booked across Canada tour and wow got hired for this other random gig <laughs> in China and wow an Australian tour so I just between 16 and 18 I was just you just hit the ground running uh yeah. <laughs> how many 16 year olds can say they've done that you know I mean you you quit school and lived your dream and here you are still doing it all yeah. these years later on a high level. Sure. Yeah. yeah. That that's really uh was it scary when you when you did that at 16? No. Or did you I just was... you just knew it was what you wanted to do, right? I mean, yeah, and I I didn't realize when you're that old, you just don't understand the scope of, you know, what failure could truly be. It's like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> You know, I just had had my eye on the prize and didn't really think about it too much, you know? Kids now, I mean, they don't start until, you know, fourth, fifth grade, fifth grade around here where I am playing Mm -hmm. instruments, you know, unless, you know, the parents or the kid wants to play before. But like my daughter didn't start cello till she was 10 years old. You were you were already performing and, you know, seasoned, well seasoned at that point. Um, Kids should they should start earlier with kids, I think. I mean, it would be great. It would be fantastic. Yeah, maybe some places do that. I don't know, but around here, it's they wait until fifth grade to start uh, to start with kids. Uh, can, can I ask you some questions that my my daughter has? Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> she she wanted to ask you stuff. Uh, she may run down here and say hi to you. I'm not sure, um, but she she's nervous about certain things. Like she's going into middle school next year, mm. um, so she's worried about a new teacher. How many new teachers have you had? And is it easy to adjust to a new teacher? I had a lot of new teachers because I moved around a lot growing up. Okay. Um, And there were times, I think the teacher is incredibly important. And I think if you get a teacher, I mean, at least for as far as music is concerned, I cannot speak to other schooling. Um, right. Uh, but you you got to find the right teacher because the wrong teacher can almost they can kill your love for something. Absolutely. I agree. My my other I, daughter, was a, she played flute and she didn't really like her music teacher. And the music teacher was kind of mean. And guess what? She stopped playing flute. Yeah. And that was it. Uh, I almost stopped. I had a, a classical teacher that was like she was very like Russian and classical yeah. and like all this stuff. And I was like, mm. and then I found my well, you teacher. didn't. Dean <laughs> Marshall, my mom found this other guy and it was perfect. He was, yeah. he taught classical and fiddle and he had this troupe, this fiddle troupe that was 12, 12 violinists playing fiddle tunes, like highly organized and arranged and all matching outfits and choreography. Oh, wow. <laughs> my nine-year-old self was just like, bring it on. Like, wow, this that's cool. Ever. So that I was really cool. I was back in in no time. <laughs> one, one other thing she wants to know is playing a stringed instrument. She's like, 
she has the notes in front of her still as she's playing. She says, does it ever get easier um, to find the notes without having to read on the page where the notes are? And uh, she says, how long before she won't need that anymore? And do you ever get scared that you're going to forget where the notes are? Those are her words. <laughs> it definitely gets easier. That much I can say. For I sure. told her practice and you'll get better at it. Yeah. And as far as like, definitely the practicing, but I would say too, like if you can get recordings of the songs now, your teacher may hate me for this. I'm not <laughs> sorry because my, I had classical teachers that just hated this, but I would, you know, I don't know what level she is learning at, but I would find recordings of the songs and I would mm. listen to them over and over and over again. And that way I could tell when I was not um, playing the right thing or right. you just kind of imprinted inside your head and then then that makes it a lot easier than trying to teach it to yourself from reading it if you're not a super strong reader so you're better at playing by ear i am i'm a i have a really strong ear but i can read music okay not as good as joe though joe is really good at it that, that's <laughs> yeah. interesting i didn't know that so that that's, i know a lot of musicians really don't know how to read music right is that that's yeah, like a i would say thing. it's a great thing to be able to have though sure sure yeah. okay well, that, that answers your questions good. Um, I have to go slow, but I can figure it out. Whereas <laughs> Joe just goes and he's like... Doo, 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 doo. <laughs> now, now, is Seth the same way? No, he's more like he 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 reads music, right? And can tell you notes yeah. that he hears. And My understanding is that he reads music. He's okay. been uh, he's been taking piano lessons for like the last, I think, is it five years or something like this with an amazing classical teacher. He's been learning Mozart and all sorts of stuff. Oh, wow. I hear little bits and pieces, you know, like, and it just sounds awesome. So he has this like other secret, like beautiful classical life going on. So, I mean, huh. I don't know how he would do, there's no way he's doing that by ear. So it right. must be. Well, right. New album coming soon. Seth plays Mozart, right? <laughs> <laughs> Did I just, uh, was that a spoiler? Oh, sorry. Uh, so any advice for young girls that are interested in music as a career or otherwise, you want to give any advice to young people out there? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, somebody asked me this the other day and I thought about it and I'm just not sure like what kind of advice to give at this point, because I started so long ago that it feels like everything that I knew when I was, you know, starting out is no longer relevant. Oh man. Like there's all this social media stuff didn't exist when I started, True. you know, like how to get started in this business and how to I mean, people will say it's relationships and it's being, you know, consistent and, you know, knowing your stuff and showing up on time and, you know, starting when you say you will, ending when you say you will, <laughs> you know, cleaning up after yourself, being gracious, um, you know, just knowing the material. I, I would say too, like, um, learn frequencies, you know, if you're going to work with a sound engineer. It's mm -hmm. really nice if you, instead of being like, it doesn't sound right, you could be like, oh, well, you know, this, you know, I'm, I'm feeling with the high mids or, you know, not really there or like something like that in order to communicate what the actual problem is because they can't read your mind. So it definitely, and it helps that relationship right off the bat. If you're coming into, you know, a new sound person every night, if you're on the road, you don't have your own, yeah. you know, it really helps establish rapport to, okay. you know, be able to speak that language and, um, it just shows shows respect too. I think yeah. respect People is big. Play. That's big. Yeah. How old is your son now? Four. Does he play? I mean, he hits <laughs> things and plays things. I mean, it's, I'm not. I'm not. Forced. He's a year I'm, behind you, so I'm I... not doing what my mom did. No. I, okay. He doesn't have the same temperament as me. I mean, if 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 we were very regimented about it, I mean, he'd only have to play four minutes a day. But at the moment, it doesn't happen, huh? No. And you're not going to force that. I, I get no, that. I think a lot no. of people that are raised a certain way kind of go the other way when they have their own kids just because they don't want to do the same thing. Yeah. I mean, if he starts getting into it, I will push him to practice and I will be more strict about it. But right now, it's just like it feels like he's just blooming and he's just learning all the things in the world. And He's four. I don't right. feel like we can narrow it down at this moment, like at this time. So he's just got access to like we ha um a friend of mine needed a place to put her baby grand piano. And I was like, I don't need a dining room table. It's <laughs> and you so it. we now have that. No, I, I found this little side table and I screwed <laughs> over. I mean, we're just two people. It's we're easy. We can eat anywhere. 
Right. But a grand piano. Now that's something. <laughs> that's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Does he travel with you on the road when you when you hit the road? Uh, presently, no. Uh, yeah. I would like to try and figure out how to do that a little bit. Especially yeah, it's got to be tough. I, I know it's so hard being away for that long. It's like someone like pulled out your heart and like he, threw it on the floor and stomped on it. <laughs> yeah, that's I can't imagine. Uh, my oldest daughter just went away to college. Not yeah. just this is her second year, but when she did at first, we've all felt the same way here. Yeah. Ripping out your heart type of thing. Yeah. Um so anyway, we, this is such a short amount of time that we have. I want to get to the good stuff here. You have a new album coming out. Um, I do. You, you actually were very nice and sent it to me, and I got to listen to it last night. And let me tell you, I'm not just saying this because you're sitting there. I spent you know, a couple hours listening to it a couple of times, and it is, it's beautiful. Thank you. I told you that last night. It's, it's a beautiful album. And when, when is it coming out? I know you've been working on it for a while. Oh, man, that is the thing. Uh, you know, the music industry is just, it's a crazy place to be right now. And I've been, I, so my dad passed away six years ago and uh, it was an accident. And so there mm. was insurance money that got given to me, my sister. And with that, I made a record and I had a down payment for a house, which I am extremely, extremely grateful for. And I have a beautiful little shrine to my dad that I walk past every day. Mm. Anyway. Um, but I made this record and it's the record I've been wanting to make for ages. And I was always looking for people to invest in me, people that would uh, believe in me. And I just felt like, you know what, I've got to invest in myself. So I went into the studio and I made the record that I wanted to make. Um, but I don't have enough money to do all the publicity. Like that would be oh, like no. spending the same amount of money again. And I'm just like, ah. so I've been trying to find partners or investors or, um, you know, I, we, there are like multiple different models that can work. Yeah. I, you know, and it's, and it's like little things like, um, you know, a person says they're going to have a meeting with someone and it's someone you really want to hear your record and you're like, yes. And then six weeks go by and you finally reach oh. out like one more time and they're like, oh yeah, I never had that meeting with that person. It was oh. like, oh, I've been waiting to hear and I didn't want to pester and like, you know, that kind of stuff. And it's like multiple things like that where you're just like, yeah. okay. But I mean, also I try and trust that there's, um, you know, <laughs> there's an intelligence to the universe and maybe everything is going to happen in the right time. But boy, do I want people to hear this record. It's it's spectacular. It needs to be out there. So someone, someone's got to step up and do something to, <laughs> to help out. I wish yeah. I had money to do that with. I, I don't know how much you need, though, but I, I got like 20 bucks. Uh, <laughs> I'm thinking <laughs> get you like far. a Patreon thing. I think maybe if I do something like that. You could, yeah. Then I can take that money and pay a publicist to properly, you know, like. Oh, my gosh, please pay. do that. You know how many people would join your Patreon? Well, it's just I didn't have content and I yeah. was moving and all this stuff. So I actually today, that's why I'm wearing all this makeup. Is I just made a bunch <laughs> of content. <laughs> Nice. So I can post things so that I can start to have something to offer because I couldn't promise anything before. That's why I didn't start it. I just was like, I there's so much change going on. So I think I'm finally at the place where this is going to start. And hopefully, what are, I, have you gone on Bandcamp? I, you know, I um, I am on Bandcamp. There is okay. some stuff there. Um, because people can yeah. give money on that too, right? Yeah, I think right. Mm -hmm. I think so. But maybe that's for something different. Like your, I don't know. Patreon would be a great idea. I think it would. Uh, I think it could be really fun. There's there's yeah. a couple other things like that that are popping up now. So I'm just trying to figure out the right one. But yes, well, we, we got to do something because the album's yeah. great. Uh, yeah, I really loved I it. That. And are you? Can you play something for us? I know. Sure. Not, I, I don't know if you're gonna play. I don't know. Uh, we're gonna play some of your songs after uh, from the album actually around this this uh, video that we're making, but. Well, you've gone off camera right now. Going to off camera. going to get the fiddle, I think. I asked for this specially because I, I was going through YouTube videos last night and I love this song. And I, I, I watched a video of a tutorial that you made. Uh, <laughs> a million years ago. It, it, it was a long time ago. <laughs> playing this song and then you slowed it down to show how to play it. And you gave all the finger positions and stuff. And I if I had a fiddle, I would have tried to to play along but uh i i've never played so i don't know the the song is called le rail du pendu did i say that right le rail du pendu 
there that's that's much better than what i said and this song blows me away every time you play it i absolutely love it um and i think people will get a kick out of hearing it and it has a special tuning right for this yes so if you had a four string violin you would do a e a c sharp okay Uh, since i've got a five then i just make that an octave I'm so excited you're going to play this. <laughs> you want me to sing the, the singing part too? Because that's if, actually technically a different song. I am not going to say no to that. <laughs> I had David Childers on a couple episodes ago. You know David, obviously, right? He was tuning his guitar through the first five minutes of our interview, and it was hilarious. <laughs> He's like, I'm so sorry I didn't tune this before. I'm like, no, it's okay. I did tune it before. It just goes out. You know, the, the frustrating thing too is sometimes I get out there and I'm in the middle of playing it and like I'll just hit it too hard. Oh. And make the string just go super flat and then the whole thing is out of tune and then it's like, <laughs> is that is that what happens with banjos too? Because it seems like Scott's banjo goes out of tune <laughs> all the time. Yeah, like they're really stretchy strings. They're, they're okay. really thin and stretchy. Yeah, banjos, yeah. He's like constantly fighting the thing, it seems like. (laughs) (laughs) All right, go for it. Let's let's hear it. We're lucky to have all those techs. Yeah, oh right. Oh my gosh. Where would you guys be without them, right? Oh it would it would running around off stage and on stage constantly. (laughs) Oh, we'd be so stressed out. I mean, (laughs) they're the real heroes of the tour. My gosh. Like if you guys could see all the stuff that everybody does. Tanya Elizabeth, everyone.
wow, that is so amazing. Uh, you make that look so easy. <laughs> can you play not that? The in artist tune. It's really not. I, oh no, I, not at all. That happens. <laughs> can you play that in your sleep? No, no, oh, you're not that good. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> that that's amazing. I, I love that song. I could uh, play it fairly drunk if I had to. <laughs> no, it sounded great. Um, do you ever break a string when you're playing? Has that happened? Rarely, rarely. Yeah, yeah it's happened, but it's rare. What do you do? <laughs> and that you your string. I mean, you finish the song out as best you can if you can. Yeah. And then, you know, I. That's also why I have other fiddles on stage. Oh right. They are in other tunings. Um. Yeah, but that could be a that could be a nightmare. Just... Yay! In the middle of a song, did you just get some panic wave of panic come over you and just grab another fiddle and do what you can? Not panic. No, no that's good. You're just kind of like, oh, this is happening. Oh, this is the next thing I have to do. I mean, it's just I don't get nervous on stage. I feel so relaxed um, because I I feel like that's the one place where I'm doing what I know I'm supposed to be doing. If yeah. That makes sense. Well, you've like, been doing it your whole life. Appropriate, you know. Yeah. So uh, oh, that that was so awesome. I, I hope people enjoy that. I know they enjoyed that. Um, obviously, you know, people know you from the Avid brothers, but uh, you were with the Ducks uh, still with. Are the Ducks still a thing? I know there was something that came up there last year. We did a couple shows uh, last year, but for me uh, at this time, I'm not going to continue, but they may end up doing some stuff. I know they do some stuff uh, locally with a fiddle player named Jeremy Pennant. Okay. Who- was the fiddle player from the original, original, original incarnation, uh, <laughs> Scrooge McDuck. Scrooge McDuck, nice. Yeah, <laughs> which predates my my being in the band, but I did love that record very much. That's cool. Uh, and the Cowboy Junkies as well, right? How long yeah. were you with them? I never was. I oh, you weren't? The record. I only oh. met one of them. Like People keep on post, like making it seem like it was some amazing collaboration and i wish it was i really do <laughs> oh, i'm I sorry love them. they're fantastic but i mean i was honored to play on their record <laughs> well so the avid brothers obviously i we've seen the instagram posts of you guys recording new stuff and obviously you can't talk about specific dates but that new album's coming right oh i i don't even know specific dates like that is not that they is don't not tell you yeah no. i mean not until like things are close like, oh okay Oh, yeah, no. Because, like, Bob said something about later this year. He's probably right. Probably right. <laughs> you're not, you, not going to cave and tell us anything. I don't you? know anything. I literally oh. don't. I, I, I got a call saying, can you come into the studio on this <laughs> date? And I said, yes, I can do this. And I went in and I did the parts that they wanted me to do. And that is literally what I know. <laughs> okay. Well, all right. I, don't, I thought I, maybe I could. It sound really good. I can tell you that it's exciting. Like, I like the songs a lot. <laughs> That's awesome. I, I can't wait. I know everyone listening to this can't wait for that album to come. Um, and it'll be here soon. Uh, all right. Um, let me ask some fan questions here. Other fan questions I had before we uh, move on to some other stuff. Uh, whereas we're running out of time. I think we only have like 10 minutes left here. Um, Meredith Baysmore wants to know which brother is better. Which one does the band love the most? Will you divulge uh, that information? Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Bonnie. There you go. Were you happy when Bonnie joined the band full time? Like, were you ecstatic by that? Yeah, she was. She um is the second other like woman to join since me. So for me, the first five years there were no women at all, uh, and then uh, we had a, a wonderful person who has been doing our uh, merch and our early entry and the social media. I mean, she just like she's amazing. That's and Emily, right? She, yeah. Yeah. She's, such a great human being i can't even tell you like being on a bus with her is, it's, it's really <laughs> nice it's nice you know I, so i felt like an anthropologist in the field before they came along like i'd be like why this why would they do that okay you know and now i have someone to commiserate with being like you you just saw that right like that ridiculousness that just happened and like the things that i think are funny that like if i said them the guys would not think now i have someone to talk to about there it. you go that's cool great giggles it's pretty good all right, Michael Gans has a question. Um, I guess we, we'll let him in again here into this episode. Uh, he says, is there a stringed instrument that you can't play? There are many stringed instruments <laughs> that I cannot play. How many can you play? I can really only play the fiddle. I mean, I can make sounds on a cello. I can play an upright bass and an electric bass. 
can play guitar and mandolin, electric mandolin. But that's that's a lot. But I mean, it's not. It's I mean, when you think of the vastness of what exists, you know, like these ones are pretty standard. Okay, all right. Uh, Sarah Gensler Mariani wants to know about the outfits that you wear on stage. Uh, she says, are they all you or does Elise Fife dress you and take care of everyone in the band when it comes to that? When it's special occasions, she yeah. comes out and helps. Um, when it's just like a normal gig, that's me. But a lot of the time, it's clothing that she has given me. Uh, and I just love her. She's awesome. <laughs> yeah, she she's amazing with the, the costumes. When you guys do like a Halloween show, oh, yeah. those costumes are crazy. How long does that take to get ready for one of those? It varies. It varies on the costume, too. All right. When we did, uh, you know, Wizard of Oz, I had it super easy. I just had to put on a dress. I was good to go. <laughs> hair and braids. And meanwhile, Joe was in there with, like, the prosthetic nose and, like, all this stuff. And that takes, like, probably a couple hours to get ready like, for, right? Hair extensions in with his hair, and it took months for the glue to come out. Like, Oh, like, seriously? Yeah. I mean, oh, man. Intense. I don't even know why they did the hair extensions, though. I mean, <laughs> He's got crazy. super long hair, I know. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Um, all right, so Elise is great. We know that. Uh, but that that so most of the time is just you getting yourself dressed for a show, and uh, yeah, yeah, that's sometimes cool. it looks good. Sometimes it doesn't. You know, <laughs> people love your clothes. I know they. There was a uh, a pair of like sparkly pants that you yeah, had. That, pants like yes. yeah, they they like took on a life of their own. There was like yes. fan made stickers and all kinds of stuff about those is that true? those pants. Oh my gosh, yeah, that's all over the place. Do you pay attention to any of the the uh, no. social media? No, with the fan base? I have a manager who checks in on stuff, um, but it's good to have that buffer because sometimes people say things that are unkind. Um, so you yeah, gotta, but you know, Avid fans are a different breed. Like the fan yeah. base, I, I don't know how much you know about. Us. Oh, I know that they're amazing, and I know that they take really good care of each other, and that's the thing that I love the most—the community aspect of it. I mean. It's a family. It's yeah, crazy. And it's unlike any fan group that I've ever heard of. Like other bands are like, you guys just have something like they're really special. And I'm like, yeah, no, our fans are super special. And I'm like, glad you know that because it, it, it really is. We talk about it sometimes, just how like people are so nicely behaved and, you know, generally being good. So, I mean, you guys keep it up. You're doing great. <laughs> there you go. It's a, it's a great group of people. Uh, you yeah. make lifelong friends. These people travel all over the country constantly. I wish I had the money to travel like some of these people do. I mean, I've been to one show and that's it. I know, There's people that have I been to four or five hundred. Face over and over again. I'm like, yeah. how? Like especially when it's it's like really far, and I'm like, we just went through the night. We drove through the night to get here. What did you do? Did you drive all day? Like it's always that Gans guy you see in the front row there. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> all right, one more fan question for you. Uh, this isn't really a. I guess it's a question from Amy Dotson. She says, "Will you adopt me and teach me your ways?" I don't know how you even respond yes. to that. Yes. yes? Okay, right. Amy. There you go. You're in. <laughs> um, so one thing I like to do. We have about five minutes left here. Um, my guest always picks the music for the episode that plays around the interview. Uh, I know you picked some songs. Uh, you want me to play a couple or a few songs off the, the album that you're working on, right? Are there yeah. specific ones? Do you want to tell me which songs you picked and why? Um, I think Something Blue would be fun to play. Um, I'm going to write this down because you didn't tell me which okay. ones to play. Yeah, uh, okay. Something Blue and... Uh, oh, gosh. Uh, you pick the other one. And okay. Then... <laughs> <laughs> you want just two off the album yeah and just don't do money in the wind because that's supposed to be a bit of a surprise because there's a little surprise there that I want, that... To, I want people to wait and the, you know what's funny that song is my favorite song that was on the album I it love was so now we just like majorly tease that one uh -oh. <laughs> i'll pick another one there's lots of good ones on there so i'll pick those two and what are the other songs that you wanted to have played? um there was a song that i recorded on like oh like almost 20 years ago oh my god wow called run tong tom longboat it's a mouthful um <laughs> but it's uh an awesome folk song that is kind of like folk rock and um uh yeah nick rose recorded this album in vancouver and kind of randomly got me to come and put on some fiddle and it just it worked and we had so much fun and i wish we could play it together but it's i don't think it's ever gonna happen um let's see uh and then 
maybe something off of uh gods and omens maybe waltzings for dreamers unless you can okay you said something off of one of your other recordings you right? pick it i mean maybe okay. Blue Ridge or something like that okay um and then maybe tico tico or something for like ridiculousness because uh i recorded that when i was 15 and wow okay it was, it's, it's kind of fun my 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 fiddle teacher daniel lap who's an insane trumpet player plays trumpet on it and he plays like, he does an amazing job <laughs> Oh my God, my mom is calling. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, mom's calling. We got to go, I guess, then. Uh, she didn't know you had an interview scheduled, I guess. <laughs> clearly, clearly did not know. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, so you need if you ever need a trumpet player, my son plays really good trumpet. Oh. He's really talented. So he plays guitar, ukulele, and trumpet. If you're ever wow. looking for uh, for an extra musician, and he'll kill me for that's saying this right awesome now. but. Kids. Yeah, he's uh, he's pretty musical. My daughter has the art part. Like you do art and stuff too. Mm -hmm. uh, she's a beautiful artist. Like she does amazing paintings and drawings and stuff like that. And my other two kids are more musical than artistic. But and I'm just kind of here doing my thing. I don't know <laughs> where they got okay. where they got that exactly stuff from. What they need. <laughs> yeah, well, right. Uh, but anyway, I thank you so much for coming on. I really Thanks appreciate this. Me. Um, the album is spectacular. I really hope it comes out soon. I uh, get that Patreon right going. I will join. Everyone will join. And uh, we're going to get that album funded to get it out uh, awesome. because it needs to be out there. So uh, we'll Tanya, make it happen. We're going to make it happen. Got to make it happen. Definitely. All right. Well, thank you so much again. I, I'd love it if you came back on sometime, like maybe after the album came out, we play some music uh, yeah. and have some more fun. I really appreciate it. And uh, thanks again. We'll talk to you soon. Sounds good. All right. Take care.